everyone. We want to thank you for tuning in to this Sunday service. Uh, we pray that all is well. We pray that God is blessing you and taking care of you during this time. Uh, we hope that you are getting the time you need with your family, uh, being able to fast, fast and pray, getting time with God. We, we, we hope that just everything is going well even during this time of pandemic. Um, we just want to thank you for the contributions that you've made so far. We want to thank you for all that you're doing for the FBC family. This morning, before we get started, I just want to open up with a quick prayer. And we'll do a scripture. And we just ask that you guys keep doing what you're doing to stay safe during this time. So wherever you are, if you can, let's bow your heads. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for waking us up. We thank you for taking care of us, for watching over us, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask right now that you please forgive us of any sins. We ask that you will create in us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that we will take this time to listen to whatever you are trying to tell us during this time, Heavenly Father. My prayer is that during this time, we will draw closer to you, Heavenly Father, that we will get to know you in a very personal way, Heavenly Father. Lord, we just thank you right now. Even though we can't come together and meet in this building, Heavenly Father, we know that this building is just walls, it's just sticks, it's just stones, it's just blocks and cement, so Heavenly Father, but we the people are indeed the church. So Lord, right now, we just ask that you touch each and every one from the crown of the head to the sole of their feet, oh Heavenly Father. Whatever they're in need of, oh Heavenly Father, whatever they're asking for, whatever they're seeking you for, oh Heavenly Father, we ask that it will be done in your precious Son, Jesus' name, oh Heavenly Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, for all those who are viewing, oh, Heavenly Father, we ask that you will send a special blessing upon them, upon this church family. We ask that you will keep them safe during this time, oh, Heavenly Father. For we know, oh, Heavenly Father, it is you who calls all things. And as a believer, we know that you can work every single thing that's going on right now for our good. Lord, we lift you up. We praise your name. We give you all honor and glory in Jesus' mighty, matchless name we pray. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, our scripture for the day is coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 through 4. And it reads, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to scriptures. Lord, we ask that you will bless the hearers and doers of your word. In Jesus' name.
said, I know we can't meet together in this building, but we still have to take care of this building. So we're asking those who can and those who will, please continue to give your tithes and offering. When this is all over, we're going to want a building to come back to so we can lift up God's name for what he's brought us through. You can give in three ways. Uh, you can give through our online system, and it's found at fbcdeluth.org. You can give through text, and you also can give by mailing in your tithes and offering to our FBC PO Box 604 Duluth, Georgia, uh, zip code 30096. For those who have been giving, we just want to say we thank you. And for those who want to give, here are some ways you can give. And uh, even if you can't, because I know there's a lot of people laid off during this time, continue to pray for this church, continue to pray for this family. Amen.
Good morning, my friendship family. Pastor Bourne is coming to you once again by way of YouTube. I have a word that I want to share with you this morning, a very brief word, coming to us from 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 3 and 4. 1 Samuel chapter 7, verses 3 and 4. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If you do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods of Ashtoreth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord, and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hands of the Philistines. Then the children of Israel put away Balaam and Ashtoreth and served the Lord only. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 7, verses 3 and 4. And from those few verses this morning, I want to talk about it's time to clean the house. It's time to clean the house. Father and our God, we come before you once again to share your word with your people. We pray now that I will decrease and that your Holy Spirit will increase. We pray that the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. And we do ask you, Holy Father, to forgive us of all sins, knowing and unknowing. Create within us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. Oh God, I pray that you are glorified in all that we say and all that we do. I pray that your people will be edified. We pray, oh Heavenly Father, that somebody will be drawn to the Savior on today. And that they will come into the fall of the blessed and be called on your children. We thank you for what you are about to do and we give you glory, praise, and honor. We ask you in Jesus' name. It's time to clean the house. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, in our home, things begin to collect and clutter. And so we find ourselves constantly moving things to walk through a hall or a room. And after a while, you just get tired and you stop and you say, that's enough. Before I do anything else, I'm going to clean up this mess. Such was the case in Israel. The nation of Israel was cluttered with idolatry, immorality, and indifference toward the Lord. Samuel's message to God's people was, it's time to clean up the mess. It's time to clean house. And I believe this is where America, our nation, is today. Amen. There is a lot of clutter in our nation with idolatry, with immorality, indifference toward God. Many of God's people have turned away from Him. And like Samuel's message to the people of his day, so is this message today to the people of God and to the world at large. It's time to clean up the mess. It's time to clean house. Now, true revival requires a good preacher. And Samuel was certainly one of those kind of preachers. He was a good man of God. He was steadfast even when others around him uh, went the wrong way. He knew the solution to revival. And he preached the kind of message that brings revival, even though it may turn many against you. You see, when you preach truth, some people can't handle truth. And many will turn away from you. But Samuel was a faithful man of God, and he spoke the truth regardless of the risk. 
Israel had drifted away from Jehovah and gone after idols. And they needed a revival. They needed renewal. They needed cleansing to get back on track with God and to become a part of the blessings that God wanted to bestow upon them. And this is where America seemed to be today. We have, amen, got away from God. Amen. We have turned toward idols. Amen. And we need a revival in the land. Amen. We need a cleansing in the land so that we might get back on the right track with God and get in line for his blessing. Now, the first thing we see in this text today in verse 3 is the conditions for cleansing. Amen. The house needs cleaning, but there are some conditions for cleansing. Amen. Verse 3 of the text says, If you do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods as Asherah among you. Samuel was, would, would, would not tolerate insincerity. Amen. He wanted the people to be honest. He wanted the people to be sincere. And so he would not tolerate insincerity. The people, amen, indicated by their lamenting after the Lord in verse 2 of the text that they wanted to return to the Lord. But words are cheap. Yes, talk can be cheap. Samuel wanted proof, real proof, of their desire to once again have Jehovah as their God. So he told them to put away their false gods. Oh, my brothers and sisters, we may claim many spiritual things with our tongues, but the proof is in our actions, not in our articulation. Someone has rightly said, what you do speaks so much louder uh, than what you say. Uh, and that's very true. Amen. That is a true, even spiritually. Amen. Many folk can talk a good faith, but they cannot walk a good faith walk. Israel lamented after the Lord. Uh, in other words, they were miserable, according to verse 2 of the text. Now, uh, that's what usually happens when you shut the Lord out of your life. You become miserable. Have mercy on they were in deep idolatry. They were discouraged from one defeat after another. And Samuel said, God will deliver you, but the house needs to be clean. Have mercy on It's a time, amen, to clean up your lives, to clean up your spiritual house. So Samuel gives some conditions here for cleansing. And condition number one is we need to return to the Lord. We need to return to the Lord. Somebody moved and it wasn't God. Have mercy on Samuel says you must return because you left God. God didn't leave you. You walked out on him. Now if you want to clean up your house spiritually, Follow the Lord. Stop making excuses and remove the distractions from your life. Stop having second thoughts and make up your mind, amen, to live for Christ. Amen. Choose you this day who you're going to serve. Amen. Condition number one, we need to return to the Lord. Condition number two, amen, for cleaning up the house is we have to give God 100% of our life. Give Him 100% of our life. Give Him all of your heart. God wants us to serve Him by jumping in with both feet, not half on and half off, not half in and half out. He wants us to serve Him all the way with total commitment, total dedication. He wants us to love him with all our hearts. 
Obey him with all our hearts. Trust him with all our hearts. Pray to him with all our hearts. Repent unto him with all our hearts. And return to him with all of our hearts. My brothers and sisters, God's plea to us today is from Proverbs 23 and 26. My son, my daughter, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. Have mercy, Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ is to be the only master of our life. Amen. Not our money, not our bank accounts, not our jobs, not our homes, but the Lord is to be the only master of our life. God is a jealous God. He does not like to compete for our love and attention, and he should not have to. Have mercy, Lord. He wants to be number one in our lives. Amen. So we have to return unto the Lord. And then the third condition is put away strange gods. Amen. Put away strange gods. And they're strange because they're not real. They're strange because, amen, they might have eyes, but they cannot see. They might have ears, but they cannot hear. They cannot help you when you need help. They cannot heal you when you need to be healed. He says, put away the strange gods. My brothers and sisters, if we're going to grow in the Lord, then we must remove whatever hinders our growth. We must take time to clean our house, our lives, our spiritual lives of sinful habits, of bad attitudes, of rebellious spirits, of envious spirits and jealous spirits. Amen. Paul put it this way, Colossians 3, 89, when he says, but now he also put off all of these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another. See that ye have put on the old man with all his deeds. Samuel said, get rid of the idols in your life. In a nutshell, my brothers and sisters, that which has become more important than the Lord should be removed. Anything in our life that's more important to us than God has to go. We need to realize how fortunate we are in having a God that we can fellowship and have a relationship with. Amen. God loves to commune and to fellowship with his people. He's not a God that's distant and stays away from his people. But he's a God that loves to be among his people. That's why he said, "Where well, two or three are gathered together in my name, I am in the midst of them. Have mercy, Lord. We got to put away the strange gods. And the fourth condition, amen, that Samuel gives today is, prepare your hearts unto the Lord. Prepare your hearts unto the Lord. Now the word prepare here means to fix your heart toward God, to fix your heart toward God. Our focus, my brothers and sisters, is to be upon God, because without Him, we are nothing. If you do not know Christ as your Savior, you are without God, you are without hope, you are without strength, and you are without excuse, have mercy on God. But you don't have to stay that way. The Bible said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. He also said that we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. And after you get saved, amen, God wants you to learn his word so that you can live his word. Amen. If you are a Christian today, the best way to focus and to fix your eyes upon the Lord is to get into His Word. Have mercy, Lord. 
we ought to focus and fix our eyes upon the Lord by getting into the Word of God. Romans 10, 17 said, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word, a man of God. Now the Word of God is so crucial in the area of revival and renewal and cleansing. Our need is not for some new truth but for the reviving of truths that we already know. The hearts and minds of many Christians today are like cemeteries, uh, which contain dead and, and buried truths of the Word of God. My brothers and sisters, if we don't use the Word of God, we lose it. Hammer says, Lord. We are to apply the Word of God in our lives each and every day. This is a great way to cleanse your life or clean up your spiritual house, amen, by getting into the Word of God each and every day. Jesus said in John 15 to 3, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Amen. We need, amen, the Word of God. And so we prepare our hearts unto the Lord by fixing our minds and our hearts toward God. Amen. And then Samuel says, serve him only. Serve him only. Amen. You know you serve the one you worship. Jesus spoke this truth to Satan when he told him to get behind me. Amen. And we are not to worship any other God but the true and the living God. If revival was to be true in the lives of God's people, amen, then they would have to turn from the false God, amen, and serve Jehovah, amen, and not the false gods, amen. And notice what, notice what Samuel says here. He says, serve him only. And he will deliver you out of the hands of the Philistines. And he will deliver you out of the hands of the Philistines. Now if the people are truly revived, if they're truly cleansed spiritually, their prospects regarding the Philistines would be very good. We all want deliverance. But there are conditions for deliverance. And Samuel faithfully declared those conditions. Once the conditions were met, God would start working for them. And in this case, it would be deliverance from the Philistine army, which had come against them. Have mercy on uh, When we start to serve God and serve Him only, then I believe deliverance will come. Deliverance from this pestilence, deliverance from this virus, deliverance from this disease will come, have us alone, when we turn back to the Lord. Now, one last point that we get from this text today is we see the conditions for cleansing, but notice the compliance of God's people. Amen. In verse 4, they complied to the word of God. In other words, they obeyed the word of God. Healing and deliverance will never come until we humble ourselves and obey the word of God. We can't just hear the word of God. we got to receive the word of God, believe the word of God, and obey the word of God. Uh, so you see compliance of God's people in verse 4 where it says, Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Ashtoreth and served God only. Thank you, Lord. You see, every time we obey God, healing is always possible. Now, God's people obeyed. They removed the negatives. And they replaced those negatives with positive. They began to serve the Lord Jesus. Amen. The heart, my brothers and sisters, cannot rest without an object of love and trust. Amen. Notice what they did. They removed 
the objects, amen, of those false gods. They removed, amen, Balaam and Asherah. And they replaced, amen, Balaam and Asherah with the true and the living God. Hear me when I say that the heart cannot, amen, rest without an object of love and trust. It cannot rest being empty, amen. God's people removed Baal and Ashtoreth from their life and they began to serve God only, amen. Uh, when they put Ashtoreth out, when they put Baal out, they invited God to come in. They didn't leave their house empty. They replaced the negative with the positive. Notice what Jesus says in Matthew 12, 43 through 45. He says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and finding none. Then he said, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth uh, the house empty, swept, and garnished. Lord have mercy. Then he goeth and taketh him self seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be, amen, unto this generation, this wicked generation. Have mercy on You see what happened? The man got his house cleaned up, but he did not fill his house. Have mercy on With Jesus, uh, with, 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 with Christ. And because he did not fill his house, replace, amen, that which was taken out. Amen. When the unclean spirit came back, he found the house unclean or clean. And he found it garnished and swept. Amen. And because there was no tenor in the house, Jesus Christ, this unclean spirit, moved back in. And he brought seven other wicked spirits with him. And it made his life worse than what it had been before. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Baal was the chief Canaanite god, the son of Dagon. He is the son of an algecoke and, and fertility god. Asherah is the Canaanite mother. Goddess of fertility, love, and war. She was the sex goddess and was considered the queen of the heaven. Uh, the Syrians called her Venus. Putting away these gods was to put away the perverse and the popular, what everyone else was doing. And that, my brothers and sisters, is what gets us in trouble most of the time with God is we are trying to do what everybody else is doing. And because everybody else is doing something, don't make it right. Amen. Uh, this would be considered odd. It would, it would be considered fanatical and narrow-minded in our day. In that day, it was considered an act of rebellion against the Philistine supremacy. Hammers at home. They were Phoenician idols, Baal and, and, and Asherah. Amen. But when the world or carnal Christians are against you, you do what God wants you to do. Um, do what is right. Clean up your life and let Jesus live his life through you. And God will bless, amen, your life. My brothers and sisters, it is time to clean the house. These are days when people are washing their hands. I, I heard somebody say the other day that they wash their hands more now than they ever washed their hands before. Amen. They're cleaning surfaces around them. They're cleaning, amen, their physical houses. They're cleaning their physical bodies. 
But God wants us to clean up our hearts. He wants us to clean up our minds because, amen, what we see in the natural is indicative of what's going on in the spiritual. Amen. There's a virus in the land. Amen. And it's a virus called sin. Amen. And the only way that we can get that virus, amen, under control is we have to be born of the Spirit of God. Have mercy on And so if you haven't been born of that Spirit, Today, you can be born of the Spirit of God. And if you have been born of that Spirit, amen, now it's time to clean up your house. It's time to do some repenting. It's time to do, amen, some returning unto the Lord. Amen. And to get into His Word and study His Word and apply His Word and live by His Word. And just like, amen, Samuel said to the people, when you do these things, then the Lord will deliver you, amen, out of the hands of the Philistines. And the Philistines can represent this pestilence that we're dealing with today. When we get our lives in order, amen, when we get our lives cleaned up, amen, by confessing our sins and forsaking our sins and turning to God, then he can deliver us out of the hands of the Philistines. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I hope you have heard a word today that will help you and in the days to come. God bless you so much. And we look forward to the day when we can meet again and be in fellowship one with another. And until that day, we we'll just keep on praying, keep on seeking God's face, and keep on turning toward Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. If we ever needed to turn, my brothers and sisters, and return to the Lord, I believe now is that time. And I believe that it's going to have to start with the church. Just like the people in Samuel's day, we're going to have to comply to the word of God. Because that's where the healing is. It's in obeying the word of God. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. Oh, God wants to deliver us out of the hands of the Philistines, but he's waiting on us to comply with his word. Will you hear him today? Will you accept him today? Will you believe him today? Will you return unto him? The day you hear my voice, he says, harden not your heart. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And God will hear and he will answer the prayer. God bless you until we meet again. Before we go, let me announce that on next Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. And on Resurrection Sunday, we want to commune with you. We want to have the Lord's Supper with you. So we want you to prepare to have your bread or, and your wine or your juice or whatever you're going to have. And we're going to commune together on Resurrection Sunday, which is next Sunday. Until then, God bless and we look forward to doing this again in Jesus' name.